new to the district. I have been here for four years, and everyone's going to say, my goodness, she's not ready. It's not her time. But let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in 1956. I went to Brandeis University and SUNY Albany. I have a bachelor's in uh, African American studies and women's studies. I, have been t I taught fourth and fifth grade elementary and college level history. I have been a business owner, a small business owner, for 25 plus years. And then I decided to come to the nation's top int uh, public interest law school. And I have a JD from, yes, uh, David A. Clark School of Law right here in the District of Columbia. I bring a breath of fresh air to the community. I don't know anyone, and I ask for you to look at me with a new piece of fresh air. Good evening, my name is Amanda Broadnax and I'm running to be your council member. One of the things that I want people to do in Ward 5 is to expect more from themselves and from our leaders, the people that we actually vote for. When I worked in the office of the chief council, I handled the entire ethics program for that agency without error. When I worked at NIH, I managed the million dollar budget without error. Just recently, I spent a wonderful year on Capitol Hill learning about how policy on a national level affects us. We have one person in the house. There's no vote. So who's really representing for us? We need more. Eleanor can't do it on her own. It takes all of us to come together. Economic development, education, health care, crime. These are the things I've already been doing for DC all over. So I'm not limited to just Ward 5, and I'd like to earn your vote. Thank you. Good evening, Ward 5. My name is William Boston, and let me say this. This is an emergency situation. They closed our office down, they took the signs down, they turned off the phones, they sent our staff home. This is a critical situation. This is not an OJT situation, an on-the-job training situation. I've been the president of a civic association, I've been an ANC commissioner, I've been the chair of ANC, I've written bylaws for organizations, I've worked on the ground, I'm a community leader. We need someone that's proven right now. This is a critical situation right now, and we need someone that's a proven grassroots leader. I have a double master's, I have a master's in clinical psychology from UDC, and I have an MBA as well, and part of my doctorate. So I have the education, I have the know-how, I have the training, I've sat in many of your living rooms with you and I've learned from you in Ward 5. When I was 26 years old, I ran against Vincent Norris and Harry Thomas Sr. The Washington Times picked me as having the best ideas to improve Washington when I was 26. I'm 44 now. But again, my name is William Boston. I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. I'm Ray Sapata. Many of you know me as. Ready. All right. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ray Sapata. Many of you remember me from the 2006 race, and many of you know me as the president of the Ward Five Council on Education. For the last three years, I've been fighting for our educational uh, problems in Ward Five. I have continued to work for you will always work for you, whether or not I am the council person in this board. But the main thing is that I have the skills, the knowledge, the know-how to get the job done. I've always worked for you. I have a, a law degree from Catholic University. I've lived in this ward for over 21 years, and I want your vote on May 15th. Thank you. Good evening, Ward 5. Good evening. My name is Frank Wiles, former chairman of the Democratic Party, Ward 5, ANC commissioner, also a business owner, been in business for over 25 years. I know how to manage budgets. I know how to manage people. But the most important part about this special election 
we need to continue the growth in Ward 5. I'm talking about jobs. I'm talking about jobs. We need jobs for our citizens here in Ward 5. It's amazing that we have a training center back as campus on South Dakota that will train our people and prepare them for the jobs for the future. On May 15th, I want you to remember Frank Wiles. Vote for Frank Wiles on May 15th. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you. So the questions now come from the uh, through, through from the listservs. The questions will go to three candidates, and each will have uh, one minute to answer. And because we have a little time now, and we don't have that many candidates, as opposed to 15, but we'll give you one minute to respond to the question. And we, each question, three counts, three candidates will be able to to respond, and not the same one on each question. The first question will be going to. Um, uh, Mr. Magnus, Mr. Hubbard, and Ms. Broadnax. And that question is, do you support keeping the full Montessori program at the Langdon Education Campus? Explain your answer. We have one minute. In regards to the Montessori program, um, before I could actually give a full answer, I'd like to look at what have they done. I'd like to look at how effective are their teachers in terms of not just test scores, but what are the children learning? Do they have a well-rounded curriculum? I'm talking about math, science, education, community service projects. Why? Because these are the projects and these are the things that colleges look for, employers look for. We need to start early, especially in Ward 5. So I definitely would like to look into that school and see what are they doing in the community. Thank you. I'm going to just simply say yes. I don't need to look at the school. I've talked to the parents about the program. I know what they do over there. Um, getting kids to read at an early age and do math at an early age and to try to shut down a program that's working is just asinine to me. I grew up, I was in a Montessori program in elementary school, so I know what Montessori means to the parents that have their kids there. So 100% yes, we're going to fight to keep that program there, now and forever. Uh, again, the, the, the simple answer is absolutely yes. Education has to be one of our biggest priorities in Ward 5. We've got to be aggressive, we've got to be an advocate for improving the quality of education in Ward 5 and all over this city. So yes, I'll support it, I'll be aggressive, I'll be an advocate for making sure first that we get some middle schools in Ward 5, because you don't have any, how do you, how do you take out middle schools in one ward versus all the other seven wards in the city? That's, that's elementary. So we need to fight to make sure that we get our middle schools back in Ward 5, that we support the monastery program and other quality programs in Ward 5 that will improve the quality for our children our next generation in this city. Absolutely. All right, the next question will be going to uh, Mr. McDuffie, Ms. Henderson, and Mr. Wiles. Do you think the revitalization of Rhode Island Avenue with stakeholder input should be a priority? Please explain your response in one minute. The short answer is yes. I think the revitalization of Rhode Island Avenue uh, should be done with community input, but I think the revitalization of any economic development project in War 5 should be done with community input. I think that's something that's not been occurring in War 5. we got a number of development projects that have already broken ground. We've got a number that are in the queue. We need to make sure that when we have these development projects, that community input is there from the beginning. We also need to make sure that War 5 residents get connected with the jobs in these projects. Not just D.C. residents, but War 5 residents in particular. It's critically important that if we want to revitalize Rhode Island Avenue, revitalize Breitenberg Road, revitalize New York Avenue, all these small business corridors that have been long neglected, we need a fusion of capital from this government to help take down the boards, eliminate the blight, put War 5 residents to work, and do it with community input. So yes. The short answer is absolutely yes. 
as a stakeholder, I have participated in this Great Streets Initiative, which is has been undertaken to get stakeholder input to revitalize Rhode Island Avenue. And I can tell you this, the revitalization, if I'm elected, won't stop there. If elected, I will take an inventory of every Ward 5 neighborhood to make sure that infrastructure needs like streets, trees, street lights are immediately improved so that we can improve the appearance of Ward 5. If we can improve the appearance of Ward 5, we can improve the safety of Ward 5. If we can improve the safety of Ward 5, of course we can absolutely attract viable economic development. You have my commitment. I have a proven track record of delivering, and I would love the opportunity to deliver for you. Thank you. The answer is yes. That's part of my platform. Redevelopment Rhode Island Avenue. My plan consists of, we need to bring a government, a federal government office building on Rhode Island Avenue where we can jumpstart the development. If we bring that like they did in Southwest, we will create jobs, opportunities for all of Ward 5 citizens. But also for Ward 5 citizens, i like to see some entrepreneurs. Part of that, when we talk about developing areas, we need to think about the entrepreneurs in this ward. 